Recently, Usher, the world-renowned artist who performed for millions during this year's Super Bowl, went viral allegedly for almost giving the devil thanks during his award speech. Watch this. I'm very honored to be able to receive this amazing award from the devil. From what, what did he say? From the devil. From because they are trying to normalize the devil. They are trying to populate. The devil is, is on the main stage at award shows and in every video and yeah, man. signs and symbols. And immediately after he realizes what he just said out loud on live TV, in an attempt to do damage control, he says this. From the, from, from the depths of my soul, my passion uh, work. I got caught. And indeed, it does look like Usher got caught on live TV giving homage to the devil. And also recently, world-renowned hip-hop singer Rihanna dressed provocatively as a nun as a mockery to Christianity. And she made sure that it was as provocative and disrespectful as possible, knowing that someone who's taken a pledge of chastity and purity within the Christian faith is meant to wear that dress. It is exactly as Jesus said it would be. Why? End of verse 12. For my name's sake. They persecute you because they hate me. And in a recent performance, Lady Gaga mocks Jesus live on stage by dedicating her lyrics to Judas, the apostle who betrayed Jesus. And right after mocking Jesus, she instantly regrets it. And I am 100% certain if they paid those same celebrities to mock another religion, they would refuse to do so. But Christianity is up for grabs when it comes to mocking Christians and the God of the Bible. They asked the question about why are Christians being treated the way they are around the world? Why are Christians constantly persecuted? Why is Christianity constantly despised, demeans, depreciated? Why, why is there such an all-out assault on Christianity? And I said, well, you can make a simple comparison. People don't want to say anything against Islam because they're afraid. People will say anything against Christianity because they're not afraid. What they get back from us is love. What they get back from us is forgiveness. We love because we were first loved. What marks Christianity is our love, and that makes us vulnerable to all the animosity and the hate because there's no fear of retaliation. Now, I know that none of this comes to us as a shock because the world has been telling us loud and clear who their God is and who it is that they worship. Thank you to uh, Satan for giving me inspiration on how to play this role. They going above and beyond to promote the devil. And it's pissing me off mm -hmm. because they, they, they used to devil worshippers used to be real secretive, oh, like yeah. going down in the basement, this yeah, secret man. world. Now they just now like, they on the ah. device too. Now going back to Usher's situation, I am by no means an English scholar, but last I checked, you can only receive something from someone. Now did Usher mean to say that he received his award from the devil, or did he mean to say he received this award from the depths of his soul? Which to me at least sounds a little weird. That doesn't make any sense. But I digress. And as he progresses into his speech, my guess is, and this is just a guess, some people in the audience realized what just happened and they wanted to leave and Usher said this to stop them from leaving. Hold on, don't move. I just wanted to say something before I started. This kind of devil worship or homage to the devil has been done on live TV multiple times. For example, watch this young lady next to world-renowned singer Joan Legend literally paying homage to a demon on national TV. Watch this. Now, if you are paying close attention to what happened here, as soon as she started doing the sign of the bathroom on live TV, John Legend said to her, don't do that, which is why she said, oops, my bad, which means John Legend is aware of the whole thing as well. Watch it again, but this time pay attention to John Legend's lips. It's Christmas time. It's coming to the voices of 60 Coast John Legend. We're joining Esperanza Spalding for holiday favorite our own Kelly. Jennifer, As the squirrel is growing darker and darker, and the sculpture is falling deeper and deeper in morality and the worship of demons, us believers need to get a tighter hold and a tighter grip of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because this world is fully immersed in demon worship. Hollywood and the music industry are fascinated by Satan. They worship him on live TV. Watch how former Disney child actor talks about how Hollywood and the music industry are fascinated by Satan. Entertainment industry. 
it's about influence. There is a reason why you see people dressed up as Satan. Full on visuals of Satan, people dressed as Satan, dressed as a demon, got upside down crosses all on their clothes or pentagrams on their clothes. People think that this stuff is just a game. No, there's a, there's a reason why the entertainment industry is doing that, y'all. They know good and doggone well that God exists. They also know that Satan exists. They're just counting on the fact that y'all don't know that. But either way, the things that you take in, that they're feeding you, those things affect you. Whether you realize it in the moment or not, they affect you. That's why they do it. I'm not going to sacrifice the honesty in order to be politically correct. I can say whatever I have to say with respect, but I'm going to say it and I'm going to say it bluntly. So if the world chooses to worship their God and their demons bluntly and pay homage to them on live TV, I think not only is it commendable to speak bluntly and honestly about their evil deeds, but we as believers must also press on in preaching the cross and proclaiming the name of the Lord Jesus Christ boldly and unashamedly. Do you remember when Disney said we love you Satan as a joke for a children Christmas movie? And do you remember when Hollywood presented Satan as not the worst guy for a woman to date as a joke? Oh, I've dated much worse guys than him much worse. I mean, at least he's famous. And I could go on and on with examples, but I want you to understand that all of that is meant to desensitize you to the spiritual battle that we face in this world. And if you are led to believe that Satan is just a joke, a two-horned character paraded on TV as some imaginary figure and who does not even exist, then what is the point of preaching the gospel? Now I want you to pay close attention to Hollywood actor Tyrese Gibson explaining the strategy of the devil in the music and movie industry. As much as I'm supposed to be promoting this movie and talking about my album, I just feel like we're in competition right now because they are trying to normalize the devil. They are trying to pop it. They, the devil is, is on the main stage at award shows and in every video and yeah, signs and symbols. And I said, you know what? We need to stop treating our relationship with Jesus like the little buddy that you talk to before you go to bed at night and not be more vocal about all the things that God means to us and all of the things that God has brought us through. Because there's been a lot of moments that you didn't post about. Mm -hmm. But yet you know, how did God decide to get yeah. me through this? Yeah, man. And yeah, they going above and beyond to pro promote the devil. And it's pissing me off. Mm -hmm. Because they, they used to, devil worshippers used to be real secretive. Oh, like yeah. going down in the basement, this yeah, secret man. world. Now they just now like, they on the ah. device too. Nothing in this world happens at random, especially in the movie and music industry. And the Bible tells us that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. For example, watch how a news segment accidentally segues into a satanic ritual. The state government announced the proposed legislation today. It's in part due to the stabbing of a police dog during an arrest in Brisbane last year. Hail Satan. Recent outages have shown And interestingly enough, when someone asked a news anchor on Twitter what happened during a news segment, she said it was a system error and unfortunate bad timing. Hail Satan. And many people believe that it was not an error, but that was done on purpose. You be the judge. Many people, and especially Christians, are tempted to think that all is well in this dark world, when in reality, they have been desensitized in order to grow lukewarm in their walk with Christ. What is our mandate as Christians? What are we called to do in this world? Are we to conform with the world, be one with the world, and go with the flow of the world? Absolutely not. Jesus says in Matthew 5 verses 13 through 16, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how will it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything thing except to be thrown out to be trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We are not called to be one with the world or love the systems of this world. As a matter of fact, we are called to be separated from the world. We are called to not love the world. No, I want you to hear those words. Do not love. It's a command, which means that if we violate it, that we're in sin. In other words, love can be sinful. Remember, I told you this is an important word for our day. Love can be sinful. 
We live in the midst of a culture that needs to hear that. It needs to hear that from us because it's, it's coming at us with this whole love is love mentality and, and how can you be against love? Nobody can be against love. Certainly Christians can't be against love because God is love and we are called to love. Therefore, how can you stand in the way of any two people who love one another? But our text today makes it very clear that there are instances when love can be sinful. That is not a love that comes from God or that brings glory and honor to God. It is pointed at the wrong object. It is a love that arises from the wrong source. What is our mandate as Christians? What are we called to do in this world? We are called to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, to call sinners to repentance, to call them and to tell them that the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back again. He's coming back soon. Repent because death is imminent. Repent because there is a day of judgment. There's a day that you will give an account to God. And if you're found without a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, you will be damned. Look with me if you will at Romans chapter 1 beginning of verse 18. Familiar passage but I want us to look at it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up to the lust of their hearts to impurity. Here we are. These lusts, these desires to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. Dishonorable passions. The desires themselves are dishonorable. Look around you, on TV, in politics, in the commercial and professional sectors, look at the university professors, look at the university students. This entire society is the product of God's abandonment. God gave them over. But John, what is the end goal? Why would God do that? Because God is holy, God is righteous, and he is a just God. Though given over to their sin, God will rescue them if they repent. Now I'd like you to listen very carefully to the following clip, which is the testimony of a man who lived a life of complete immorality and got AIDS, but at the very last chapter of his life, God rescued his soul from hell. Sitting right back there was a young man named Robert Lagerstrom. He was one of the leaders in the gay pride parade in Los Angeles. He was dying of AIDS. He said to one of his friends, I'm dying. I'm afraid to die. I'm not ready to die. Where can I go to get help? One of his fellow sinners said, there's a church in the valley called Grace Community Church, go there. He came here. I read that psalm. He was a man crying to the Lord in trouble. He was a prisoner in misery and chains. He was in the darkness and the shadow of death. And I read that psalm. Later that day, he said to me, you read that, and I knew it was in the right place. You read that, and I kept saying to myself, how do I get delivered? How do I get delivered? Where do I go? What do I do? And then he said, you got up and you preached this really long, long sermon. <laughs> and the more you talked, the more irritated I became because I wanted to be delivered and you kept talking and talking. I didn't hear a word you said. So. He came at the end of the service, came to the prayer room, fell on his face before God, repented, embraced Jesus Christ as Lord, was wonderfully saved, and I baptism, ba baptized him right here in these waters. Before I did that, he gave testimony to everyone he knew, 
And his, when the gay pride parade came, all the leaders of the parade, when it came by because he lived on the route, came to his house to wish him well as he was dying, gave him all the gospel, went to heaven. We speak the truth about the sin in order that we might speak the truth about the Savior who forgives, right? It may seem too late for a lot of people, and when we read Romans 1, 18 through 32, it is very, very bad news. But a couple of verses before that section, the Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to the Jew first, then to the Greeks. All we can do in this depraved culture is to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. My question to you is, do you know him today? If not, then my friend, today is the day of salvation. There is no waiting. There is no tomorrow. Right now is the day of salvation. If you have not repented of your sin, if you have not given yourself to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right now is the day. There will be no excuse for you after death. There will be no excuse for you once you pass from this life to the other one. The Bible says it is appointed unto men to die once and after that comes judgment and anyone who died without the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be condemned forever in eternity in hell. And my friend, my question again to you is, do you know Jesus Christ today? If not, then fall on your knees and repent of your sin and confess with your mouth that Jesus is is Lord. This message is an invitation to all of the rejectors of Jesus Christ, those who mock him and his gospel and trample underfoot as it were the precious blood of the Savior. What will you do on that last day, my friend? Where will you hide? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 31, it is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Don't wait until it's too late, my friend. Don't think that you have your whole life in front of you and maybe you'll get to Jesus at some point. Don't think like that, my friend, because tomorrow is not promised. But the Bible says, if today you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Run to the Savior by faith today. He suffered and died on the cross to atone for your sins. And by putting your faith in him, you will be washed clean of all your sin and walk in newness of life in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Today is the day of salvation, my friend, if you hear this message. Know that God calls you to put your trust in his Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and repent of your sin so that you may be found in Christ and not die. That is the only option to life. That is the only option to peace. That is the only option to eternal bliss. His name is Christ. There is no other one. He says in John chapter 14, I am the truth, I am the way, I am the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. In Acts chapter 4 verse 12, the apostle Peter says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And that name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in him and him alone, because in him only is the eternal and abundant life. This is it for this video, and let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and make sure to share it with a friend, especially a friend who's not a believer. I invite you to support our ministry by becoming a Patreon member or channel member and by purchasing one of those wonderful t-shirts that we designed down in our channel store. And you can also go on the gospelofchrist.info to ask us questions and learn more about our ministry. If this is your first time on the channel, I invite you to subscribe, like this video and share it with someone. If not, I hope to see you on our next video. With love in Christ, John Henry with the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm.